I didn't cast any spirit summoning spell. What are you doing here? Good thing they're wearing silent bells or else this musical sequence would be nothing but noise. This filly didn't exist a moment ago. Her whole existence is solely to be crushed by this box. This low resolution stallion looks out of focus at first, but nope, he was just born with fewer pixels. Confirming what we knew all along, Derpy is the true star of the show. Derpy's body derps. Starlight Hedge Trimmer. It's mostly a day dedicated to presents and candy. Starlight doesn't like presents or candy. Is she in the wrong for being a buzzkill? Or are Twilight and Spike in the wrong for insisting she like the same things as them? Just to be safe, better send both. A heart swarming tail. Roll credits. The book is a fiction within a fiction, and you could easily consider what the spirits come up with, or, or the fact that they're all played by established characters, to be fictional as well. How many layers of fiction can we go down before getting stuck in limbo? This scene is lacking a very important detail. There, fixed it. Starlight or Snowfall attempts to transmute gold with a process requiring immense magic and concentration. Maybe this would be best attempted somewhere other than a loud, bustling city? Also, putting that magic to use by teleporting in and out of a dragon's nest would be a lot more profitable. Snow Dash was Snowfall's loyal assistant. Equestrian Boomer sure did love naming their children after snow. The edge lighting looks nice, but it glitches and has a mind of its own as she walks away. Snowfall places the weight here, then it disappears. This might just be the first time the show has depicted teleportation being incremental, as in only part of Snowfall is here for a moment. Snowfall lets Snow Dash go home, so maybe she's not so mean and cold-hearted after all. Or maybe the plot couldn't progress until she was alone, so she let Snow Dash leave early because she wanted to get the episode over with. Perry the Platypus is a fictional character inside of a fictional non-diegetic musical number, inside of a fictional story, inside of a fictional cartoon, inside of a simulated reality. Nothing is real. Embrace Pony. Snowfall steals and destroys these objects. It's going to be awkward encountering the victims of her theft at the party later. I'm good now, every pony. Where's my platypus toy? I dissolved it in a cauldron. Your crimes will never be forgiven. I hope you burn in Tartarus. The smoke from Snowfall's spell disappears instantly. Notice all of the supernatural weirdness takes place after Snowfall inhales these mysterious vapors. What's that? A drug reference in my TV white cartoon? It's more likely than you think. And they'll have me to thank for it! Wait a minute. Starlight, we're almost 10 minutes into the story and you only now choose to interrupt? It would be quicker to hold all questions till the end. Seems a little extreme. Says the pony who tried to make every pony the same by replacing their cutie marks with equal signs. No, the equal sign thing was actually a great plan and made sense. Using magic to end a holiday because you hate good things is incredibly contrived and should not be compared. This is what it looks like when the tables turn and the apples come bobbing for you. I didn't cast any spirit summoning spell. What are you doing here? What a perfectly accurate reaction to a ghost appearing in your house. Ooh, what's this place? Uh, oh, wait, yeah. Every time something interesting happens in this episode, it's followed by the realization that this is a story and has zero bearing on the world of Equestria. The ghost of Christmas past, I mean the spirit of Hearthswarming past, shows Snowfall her childhood solely for our sake. Work hard, learn, and use your skills to better Equestria. And how do these help you to learn magic? Professor Edgelord forgets about the other two things because the episode is short on time. This whole exchange is nonsense. Even Little Snowfall's response feels like it's from a different page of the script. And how do these help you to learn magic? I want to be strong enough to stop Wendigos and help ponies. It's your choice. Spend your time learning to become a powerful unicorn or play with your toys and make nothing of yourself. Okay, choice A. Spend your whole life studying and end up like this depressed creep with no friends. Or choice B. Celebrate the holiday and play with toys. This should not be a difficult decision for a child to make. Lyra breaks character and undresses before the director calls cut. Vinyl Scratch is playing music from a wax cylinder. The sin is the distinct lack of vinyl scratching. This scene has a lot of ponies talking to each other, but according to the animator who left this note, it could have used more. And the reason is to be with your friends. You know you're doing your Pinkie Pie voice, right? Twilight's still upset that she didn't get the part. Party was- Wait! Can we take a quick break? I need to refill my cocoa. But viewers at home, don't refill your cocoa. You need to keep your butt planted and watch these commercials. How else would you know that Gak is back? Flutter Holly's dress vanishes. I'm just mad at some pony who was complaining about how awful Heartwarming Eve is. Don't suppose that pony's name starts with snow.
There's one too many ponies that have names starting with snow. No longer is Princess Luna feeling insecure about being the shorter princess. Spirit of hearthswarming yet to come reminds us that without the holiday, every pony would freeze to death. That's right, mandatory festivities ward off the Wendigos. Be joyful or else. Boy, this story would sure be difficult to follow if you didn't already know about the Wendigos. Sudden and drastic change of personality, unexpected gratitude, and giving away possessions. Yep, Snowfall is definitely showing some red flags and her friends should be very concerned for her. It was always said of all the heartswarming Eve celebrations, Snowfalls was the heart's warmingest. Probably because she dumped Flutter Holly's eggnog into the hearth. That stuff is super flammable. Never forget Bootleg Rainbow Dad. Wait a minute.